Welcome to the High Octane Media Podcast, Episode, episode seven. 7. So, tonight we're going to have on Chad Erlinson. I believe that's how you say it's last name. Um, he is, what is he, does he run HERA? Hardwater Ice Racing Association. And then we have Ryan Aho coming on here to talk about uh, the Grand Rapids Speedway. Uh, we did say there was going to be a big announcement. And You're doing that now? We're going to talk about that in just a couple seconds before we get to them. And, we'll, huh. and then we'll talk more about it on the tail end of Ryan's. I hear this stuff the same time <laughs> you guys do. So the announcement with that is there's a derby coming to Grand Rapids Speedway for August 19th in uh, at the Grand Rapids at the fair. At Tasca County yep. Fair. Yeah, we haven't had one in was it five, five years, years? Yeah. and we haven't had a good one in a while. Uh, WFO Derby Promotions is going to be putting it on, and it's going to be a good show. should be a pretty high car count. Um, they don't have the numbers for payouts, but from what I'm understanding, it's going to be a pretty good payout. Decent. Um, classes are still yet to be announced, but I want to get that out as soon as possible with all the Derby guys that are following us. To and get to our hometown track, because yes. finally, <laughs> the Derby is coming back to Grand Rapids. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm a little pumped myself. We're going to be trying to build a couple cars and put in there ourselves. And uh, with that being said, we're going to go to the intro video here for Chad, and then we'll be right back to talk to him. Welcome, Chad. Can you hear us? Hey, guys. How's it going? I'm pretty good, good. And you? Good. Still recovering from the last week's trip, but <laughs> we're getting <laughs> Where'd here. you go again? Uh, we were down in Texas for High Lifter Bun Nationals, which is a huge ATV event that we work with for the whole week down there. So, Oh, that'd be a blast. It's, it's, it's part of my daytime job to let me do all my nighttime race and stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you want to tell us a little bit about this year, uh, the 2022 year anywhere for you? I guess 2023 as well with the ice racing. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, 20, our 2023 season is already over, which is crazy. That's, you know, three months into the, the year so far. But uh, had a really good ice racing season, probably our biggest turnout uh, ever. We were averaging about 70 racers um, each week. Um, and it just kept getting, even the last race, we had three or four new drivers which is pretty awesome um and we got our full season in so uh that worked out good and and we're having the banquet already this weekend for that and then as soon as that's over we, we flip into baja mode and move on to that series so you well, i know you guys uh we were there last year once we came once this year and uh you you had so many more people it was uh pretty wild yeah, I think it was our, as far as ice racing, it was the probably consistently the most spectators we've ever had, um, even on the cold days and the windy days and things like that. It was pretty cool. Um, and that's the nice thing about the ice racing events. It's it's free for anybody, so um, it, it doesn't cost anything to come watch. Just sit in the car and watch, or you can hang out in the pits and do whatever. So um, we, we, don't, we don't make much money doing it. That's why we do the Bajas in the summer is to help support our ice racing. But uh, we have a lot of fun. So, Well, not only do you promote the event you actually race it too right yeah for the ice racing um i'll run we, we run seven classes this year and, and i ran four of them uh with three different vehicles so it's it's chaos just trying to keep all the racers happy and keep all the events going but um the good thing is we got a really good team that runs the helps run the officials and in, in the track and, and all that so it allows me to go out and play a little bit um during the Baja season uh last couple years it's been so crazy and busy with everything going on there I haven't had time to either build the car in between or 
to even race it, but um, you used to be able to do that too, but not not the last couple of years. <laughs> well, you want to tell us how you ran these four cars because it it's it's a nonstop. It just keeps going. <laughs> Right. Yeah, we pretty much run them. Uh, you know, it's one one heat's out there. The other heat should be lining up. We, you know, we try to run it as fast as we can. Usually, start racing at eleven or a little bit after eleven, and we'll get done anywhere from between four and five. Um, and uh, usually, the only break we take is what we need to do to plow the track during the intermission. Um, but it's it's for me personally, it's it's literally hop in one car, um, hop, you know, get done with that class, hop in the next car, and ready to go. Um, I really got to do my homework during the week is, you know, just like any good racer, you, you know, the, it's, the racing is one during the week um, and, and being prepared. And that's what the only way I can do it. And, and thankfully, if I do break down, uh, it's pretty cool because most of the competitors will come over and help you out and, and get you going if you need to in between rounds and stuff, too. But um, it, definitely, I ran. it definitely seems like a good crew of guys. Um, we've got to talk with a few of them here and there, but usually everybody's so busy. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's uh, with our racing, everybody runs per class. Everybody will race three times. You have two heats, qualifying heats. Um, however, you do in the first heat, we we invert you for the second heat, and then however you guys, then we take the total points. And and in some of the classes we have A and B features, so we'll qualify them according to that and kind of go. So I mean, um, you know, there there's been times where I'm running 12, 13 races in in one week and and. I think I'm getting my oh, age is starting to show up, catch up with me now because I'm starting to feel really tired afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you even found time. For in you, that, you just you even found time in that busy uh, running between cars to come over and talk to Dwayne here. I was pretty tucked away in the car; it was kind of cold, but <laughs> he's a freeze baby when it comes to wind. I was standing out in it anyway. So this I would say I, every time I seen you were you were riding in a nice heated car or close to it, and he was out there freezing his butt off. So <laughs> <laughs> he was wrapped up. I got ice in my veins. I can handle that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we, we try to do, you know, we do a, a program. You know, the hard part for us out there is we don't have an announcer. So uh, we try to do a, a, a program that has the the, the class um, lineups and the rules and all, or not the rules, but uh, the running order and stuff like that. And then also has the points on the back of it so you can kind of figure out what class is out there and what's going um, this year it helped a lot because we got more wheel drive cars and, and the trucks out there. So it breaks up the, the normal cars a little bit more. So it's easier to tell what's going on, but, um, those but guys yeah, were it, actually it, switching, uh, like you can run one of them smaller cars. You can run them in two or three different classes, right? So they're changing tires and stuff in between heats and. Yeah. But if you do right, you could run a car. If you really wanted to, you could run a car in five classes. Right. Um, if you had a front wheel drive car, I mean, there's a lot of people that do, uh, you know, rubber class with one guy and their buddy or their, their kid or their dad will run the navigator class and then they'll switch and then they put studded, you know, the, the, the stock studs on, um, which is so many studs per foot on those. The full studded cars, you can you can do that with a rubber car. They, did, they won't compete as good, but if you want to go out there and turn some laps and go fast, it, it works for that too. Right on. It looks like a lot of fun. I've never been in ice racing. I'm kind of, you wouldn't. Well, if you've listened to any of the other podcasts, you know I'm I'm scared to death of drowning. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll have to get you a big rubber ducky for next year to hang on to out there. Well, if you get me a, a blow up tutu, I'll wear that. No. <laughs> <laughs> that scares me. You might enjoy that a little bit too much, but <laughs> right, right. I'll go out and give the halftime show. <laughs> but uh, I mean, the the biggest thing I see at your show is mainly like uh, smaller compacts compacts, and uh, little trucks. But you, I did notice you yep. had big cars this year. Last year you had brought them over from Akeley, I think it was. Uh, but this yeah, year years, you actually had them. Yeah, and in the years past, we, we've had a couple times where other tracks couldn't race because they, they couldn't get in the lake because of either slush or ice conditions or whatever. So we invited them over, and it was awesome because our group liked it to see something different and – and come along with them and then uh you know we've we've always had the interest from one or two people to try to get that class going um and then last year ryan really was one of the bigger pushers on it where he wanted to run here and run run up there with those guys so he, he kind of got he pushed hard to get some more people going on it and you know by the year we had four or five consistently out there um we even threw a, some of the truck guys even wanted to play out there and, and try with that too um i think i don't know if they were out there that weekend you played or not but 
yep. uh, or came out. But uh, so yeah, it's it's one of those things where hopefully it'll take off. We, we have probably five or six guys that want it or are saying they're going to build cars for next year. So that means probably one or two of them will. But um, but we got a lot of interest in it. Um, just like the, the truck class, we built that one. Uh, that's only the second year out there, and we're consistently running 12 cars out there at the end of the year now, so or 12 trucks, I should say. Um, and that's been a really fun class and, and something different out there for everybody to enjoy. Well, one crazy thing to me is most of the sports we follow, are, their, their numbers are down, whereas we come to your event, and the numbers are actually up from last year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I wish I knew because, I mean, it – we've struggled for years to, to try to grow it. I mean, we can do a, a Baja event and get anywhere from 70 to a hundred people on, on some of them on the bigger ones. And then we were struggling. We were sitting at 40 to 45, 50, maybe um, cars, which is uh, good enough to put on a show for ice racing. Um, but in the last two or three years, we've been really lucky where we, for, I don't know what we're doing, but I'm happy it's going and working right because we've had a lot more, in that 40 or 50 cars it was like three or four big groups of buddies and friends but then if you lost one of those groups you lost a big portion of them right. whereas now it's getting a lot more uh diverted out with different people and, and new racers coming in and and just help spread everything out a little bit more and, and that way if you get uh, a group that's happy or mad or sad or whatever you, you know it helps level it all across the field so um and and i don't know why because a lot of the guys don't like the ice racing as much as the baja stuff because they don't like to work on stuff in the cold, but it's, it's in the last two years, it's really grown quite a bit. And, and I wish I knew the secret cause I keep pushing it harder and do it more, but, um, so how, far we, how long have you been running that youth class? Uh, the 15 and others, we've probably been doing that for, I'm guessing 10, 12 years or so. We started it oh. just because a lot of the kids, a lot of the kids said, oh, you know, dads would say, can my kid drive? And like, well, we didn't really want them out there because our, our rubber class, um, is pretty competitive where the top 10 cars can, can win in each week. So it's pretty rough. You know, I mean, you got to be on that edge there. Well, yeah. if you threw the kids out in there, it was not good for anybody. Um, and we wanted them to have a fair chance to learn and, and have fun with it and not get their butt kicked and, and want to keep racing. So we, we started that and I mean, it's, we've had a lot of racers that came up through that and they're, they're going out to North Central and some of the dirt tracks and, and been playing there and, and it's really helped them. And, um, and it's and it's good for us to just get some fresh blood out there and and stuff. It's pretty funny because usually the what we'll do is, you know, if it's the first couple races, we say you know if you want a dad or or somebody in there to help you race, um, you know, go ahead and do it. And usually by the second or third race, the kid wants to kick the parent out, and they do better off on their own once they get the parents out of there. No, I, <laughs> I think I, there's, uh... there's too much arguing in the phone in the in the car. <laughs> right. Yeah. I noticed that. I was like, well. I didn't really realize, you know, just one time coming into it, I didn't realize that the kids were out there. And then I started looking at who was riding with, and I'm like, what the heck? These are the the youth class, and like the top three kids out there, they didn't have nobody with them. Like they already they already had it figured out. Yep. Yeah. Usually, it's, I don't know what it is, but you give them two or three races, and then they're like, okay, I'm ready to go on my own. I'm I'm sick of fighting with you. Just let me be my own thing, and and they're good on it. And like this year, we had a couple couple two kids that. Um, shared a car so they they both raced three races and they had the new people with them for a couple weeks and um you know it's 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 a great safety thing for when they're driving through the pits and things because some of these kids are just learning i mean you know some of them are 11 12 years old um right. and they haven't been around the cars or, or you know they may be driven through a field or anything but when it's different when you get a you know a, a full pit area and, and spectators around and stuff like that just to keep everything safe so so i've seen Ellie Lang was down there with her Hornet from uh, her Wasota Hornet. Yep. Yeah, I, she, that through the I think she made it with. to two races this year. That's awesome because uh, well, I, I seen the pictures through James Jones, uh, James at the track there. And uh, definitely enjoy running into him out there every time we come out there. Yep. He's awesome. He, he does an absolute pictures. awesome job for us and promotes – uh us through all the racers and all that plus like i've told them a hundred times there's there's so many race moments that me personally i wouldn't i wouldn't have unless he's out there taking them and he'll take anywhere from usually it's about two thousand photos a, a, a race weekend and and then share them and let anybody use them share them whatever you want to do for free and it, it's pretty cool yeah he's an awesome guy 
Yep. We yeah, invited him, we invited him along to come on a few uh, ex, uh, adventures this summer. So we'll see. That's cool. What he wants to do there. He, he I think he, he's loving it. I mean, he, he first came out, it's probably been six, seven years for the ice racing. And then he he's went to a couple of Bajas and then, you know, now he's loving it going both. He, you know, he's not into the, so much the dirt track stuff anymore. He got kind of got burnt out on that and got burnt on some stuff. So now he's going out to all these other sports and, he loves working with you guys and you know interacting with you guys too. So, yeah, it's it's a blast working with him. He came up for the enduro here in the Grand Rapids Speedway, and I mean it's dirt track, but it's as close to dirt track as uh, your Baja is, you know. So he took yep. some good pictures, made some of those uh, awesome player cards or driver cards for yep. people. I know they love that. I think he. I know he was trying to make one for everybody that came out and raced. He was trying to make one for the ice race. And, and he's also done a lot of the Bajas too. Yeah. The, your, so tell us about your Bajas, about your track and how it's different than anybody else's Baja bush race. And uh, I'm not, not trying to put down anybody's Baja bush race, but I definitely enjoy going to yours to watch that. <laughs> they, they definitely stand out. Yes, they definitely stand out. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing that, that we do compared to a lot of the other tracks is we have a lot bigger bumps and jumps uh, compared to some other ones. A lot of them are just flat tracks or they might be, you know, uh, not a figure eight, but some other shape, but we'll put a lot more rollers and they start out as rollers and they, they get bigger and bigger and wilder and wilder, um, especially as you get to the, the Brainerd event. I mean, that's, it just gets to the point where it's crazy, but um, I think we, we try to, if you come out to our track, it's like a, a cross between an autocross, a demolition derby, and a motocross track. I mean, that's kind of the, how I would explain it. And, and we try to control the chaos as much as we can and make it safe and fair and, and good for everybody. Um, but it usually puts on one hell of a show and, and then and do that. And um, usually it's gotten to the point where if you don't roll over enough, uh, cars, the, the, the crowd gets disappointed, which is kind of funny. But <laughs> right. And... And half the drivers, you know, you know, I would say 95% of the time when the car rolls over, um, the guy's smiling from ear to ear and he's happy and he's just hoping that he can get it fired up and get it going again. So, Well, that was really neat to me. Uh, you know, Sloan had gone and, and done video at one or two before I got involved, you know, and I came along and grabbed a camera and right away I was like, okay, I got to get this angle so I can get this, you know, full sand all four tires off the ground on this little bump, you know. And that turned into, what did the announcer just say, 19 rollovers? I was like, this is crazy. You know, it, was, it was just a blast. Yep. Well, we were down in the crowd there, and uh, the crowd just goes wild with the rollovers. Yeah. Slam a beer, get hooting and hollering, and away they go. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's, it's every time, you know, we're, we're always a little scared that, okay, somebody's going to get hurt one of these times and stuff, so we, we try to make them as safe as we can, but... Um, there's some drivers that once you put that helmet on, um, the brain shuts off and they're just going to go and, and let us, you know, descend it pretty much. And, and right. so we, we try to protect them from themselves as much as we can, but you'll still get some pretty good shows and, and some go hardcore so, and send them up. So, yeah, they're, uh, I don't know. They're fun to watch. I mean, I've seen some of our enduro cars that people have bought and brought out there, um, I don't know how the suspensions last, to be honest with you. We can't even get them to uh, make it around a track full of mud. <laughs> so. right. Yeah. I, it makes you wonder. It gives you, you know, it gives props to some of those cars. How they can, you know, sometimes we got cars that have been out there five, six, seven years, and they'll run two or three events a year with them. And, and you know, the next, you know, the next car you're driving down to the, to the track, and you'll see some car hit a curb on the road, and, and, and it's totaled out and junk and stuff. But, um, but you know, we, we do it. We, we run five or six different events at, at we do the Pine River Fair, the Aiken County Fair, uh, do two during the Crowing County Fair in Brainerd, and then we do our own event, um, the Last Chance Baja, which is our big one at the end of the year. Yeah, it's it's always a lot of fun, too. I, I always I recommend anybody who has never been to one, at least go once and see what you think. Uh, same with the ice racing. I mean, the ice racing is yeah. pretty wild. Um I'm scared of the ice, but uh, <laughs> I haven't fallen through yet. Um, what is it? Is Aiken. Aiken's track was not bad. I've never been to Pine River. 
Um, I know Jeff Jones goes and takes pictures, but the Aiken track was pretty yeah. long. It was a different track. Yeah. Yeah. Almost every year. I mean, all of our tracks in Pine River and, and all the Brainerd races, we, we got to build that, that day of or the week of, because it's during our fair. Normally there's some other events going on and stuff. Um, so that's the, the hard stressful. That's usually when you see me before the races start, I'm worn out and tired because I've been working on equipment and building stuff and moving stuff and, and, and trying to keep everything rolling. Um, the, the Aiken track was an all new track this year. We worked with some of the, the mud run guys. Um, we always got to kind of share the track in the areas and stuff. So for about 10 years, we had the same track in Aiken. That was the only one that kind of stayed up, but the, the track itself got pretty weathered and beat up and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. and we didn't have the, the money and the equipment there to fix it up like we wanted to. Well, the mud truck guy said, well, let's go through and do a complete remodel last summer. Um, and it was, I, that's the one, the track I wish I would have raced on last year because we used half the racetrack. Um, we used the front straightaway and corners one and two of the, of the Aiken raceway. Um, and then we burned back in the center and, and made some awesome loops in there and stuff. Um, and so that one should only be bigger and better this year. Um, once we get it fine tuned for another season, cause most of the infield stuff was there to, good to go. So you guys had quite a bit of cars there too, didn't you? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we had mid fifties, like 52 to 55, something like that for cars, which is pretty good for them. Usually Pine River is their first one of the year and you will end in, in the usually low forties or so for cars. And then Aiken's about the same mid forties to so and So we were a few extra there. Um, and then Pine River and then Aiken will we'll run all four classes um, to, to get that car count. In Brainerd, the first night we'll run two cars or two classes of our four, and then Saturday, that's Friday night, and then Saturday night we just run two, and we'll get 60 to 80 cars each night there just that's for the crazy. two classes. And then um, the last chance Baja, which is I think going to be, it should be August 26th this year, so it's going to be three weeks after the Brainerd Fair. Um, that one we've been running around 94 cars, all four classes, 94, 96 cars. And that's a two day. Uh, no, that's just a one day event. We we okay. started at noon and and pound them through. So, you guys had a two day this year though, though, right? That's during the, uh, that during the fair. Yep, that's during the Brainerd Fair. It's a, it's a Friday and a Saturday, but it's two separate classes. So, and we made we, it for we Friday. Used to always we always do one class. I'm sorry, what's that? Uh, we made it for Friday, but we didn't make it for Saturday. So it was like it was cars one day, trucks the next, right? Yep. Yeah. The first, usually one night we'll do uh, the small cars or the the larger four cylinders in the trucks, and then the second night we'll do the small four cylinder cars in in the six cylinders. And on Bajas we go by wheelbase on the four cylinders. Um, we do a uh, under uh, under over 99 inch for two classes if you're under or over, and then we do all the six cylinder cars going to one, and then the the compact trucks going to another. Okay. Yeah, it was a good show. We definitely enjoyed it. I mean, these guys, for the first time, were more in awe than anything. Um, <laughs> never seen. Well, uh, that's good. We appreciate it, and we we want to know the goods and the bads, and 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 try to make everybody happy and keep them going. So, well, we've come out to call it the uh, what did I call it, the poor man's um, rally cross. That's pretty much yeah. what it is. Yeah, but uh, I wouldn't suggest those... bringing an ice racer or a car that you really value a lot because they will get trashed and, and beat up and it'll never go down the road straight again. But um, other than that, bring whatever you out. And, and, and that's a cool thing. Um, that's where the Baja really helps is you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be a dirt track car to set up all this and have all the money into it and all that. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's about the cheapest form of racing as you can get. I mean, put a cheap roll cage. Um, one thing we do with our, our Baja races compared to some other classes, we make you have a, a cheap, uh, just a four point cage in there, nothing fancy or anything. Right. Um, and then just knock the windows out and, and all the glass and let her buck from there. Well, you guys are obviously doing something right. Everything's growing. Your Baja, your, uh, ice racing. And maybe but, it's just cause you guys are great people. I mean, we love what running into you <laughs> out there and talking and. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I, th I think a lot of it helps. I mean, you, you guys have been out and shared a lot of videos and pictures and stuff like that. James has been out there pushing it and stuff. So I think that always helps, you know, especially these days on social media and, and uh, you know, our, our website kind of sucks. So we, we, we keep most of our stuff on our, our Facebook site up to going. Um, and we update our face or our website once or twice a year. Um, but it's, 
a lot of it's just the core group that we have that we, we bust our butts to try to make it work and try to make it fun for everybody and try to keep it fun, cheap and safe, which is hard to do in all three of those, but we try to work our butts off and we appreciate having you guys to support us and, and share it out there for us and all that too. Oh, we love that you like having us out there. Um, most people don't know this, but I actually started a website with High Octane a couple of years ago. It had zero traffic. So I just x it, stuck with uh, Facebook and YouTube, you know, just stayed on the social platforms. Um, I don't even know when the last time it was that I visited a website besides Google, Amazon, or eBay. Right. Besides the social medias. So, <laughs> uh, yep. Chad. I'm a throttle jockey. I'm not a computer guy, so, I mean, I can... I can at least get on Facebook and make some quick changes or updates and things. And, and, and if I can do that, most people should be able to do that one a lot easier. And that's, that's why we do it our, our, that way. And then again, well, it's, it's nice on that Facebook platform because you, if you're following your page and you have the notifications on, then everything's right at, you know, right at your fingertips. Phone just buzzed. What's that? Oh, <laughs> this is what I changed. Exactly. Yep. I did make a group. Um, was it Minnesota Motorsports event, Events. event sharing? Yep. Um, I don't know if you guys are on there or not, but uh, anytime you have an event shared over there, most people that are on there are from Minnesota. So then so that yeah, way, I've, you know, it's I've just seen more it. people. Yeah, I, I'm, I haven't switched over to Baja mode. Usually once this, the banquet goes this weekend, um, then we're going. We, I've already been talking to all the three different fairgrounds as far as the contract signed up and get those going but um but yeah real soon here i'll be baja mode and try to get all the schedules out to everybody and, and share those out there and 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 do that because i mean just like all the, the promoters out there and stuff if we can all help each other out and share it out and, and work together it helps everybody out so oh definitely and uh, we'll be watching for dates because um if we have anything if we can make it to these we're gonna come i definitely like these bajas that you run and uh it's not on ice. I mean, that's a big plus for me. <laughs> the, so, the girls well, oh, we got to get you guys in the car, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I actually got a Focus sitting in the backyard of somebody's house that uh, needs coil packs put on. And I've seen Focuses out there. So I know that they run. Yep. Um, so that may be a possibility. We are working on a truck and trailer to or a van and trailer. Um, look at Because it, it's a lot easier to haul stuff in a van. Um but then we'd be able to bring cars to shows. This guy knows where, or has, or knows where to get one uh, to haul two, two cars at the same time. So then we'd yep. just be able to bring a couple cars to a show. Nice. Whether or not we're able to actually race both of them, uh, we may have to bring drivers <laughs> with us too. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's all going to depend on if we get to split and have two crews this year or not. Right. You know? the, the better we get the yeah. second crew at, the more fun we're going to have, I think, with our main crews. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are working. <laughs> we are working on a second crew. Um, been training his his boy Dylan. He yeah. can work Saturdays, and that might possibly change in the future here uh, to more days. But even if we have a second crew that can make it to your events, we're going to try to send them that way. That sounds good. We 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 you guys are always welcome. Just let me know you're there and and they're coming, and I'll. You know, make sure that we can try to get you in the do in the door one way or another, or in the stands, whichever. Some of you guys, sometimes you like the stands, sometimes you like the pits and stuff, but we'll we'll get you in there somewhere. All right. Yeah. Well, I suppose we're gonna switch over to uh, Brian here, but thank you again for coming on. Definitely enjoy talking with you every time we see you. And uh, uh, before we go, is there anybody you want to give a shout out to, um, or anything you need to to direct these people to find us? You already talked about your website, but. Um, yeah, the biggest thing is it, it, anybody looking for information on the, on the ice racing or the Bajas, if it's hard water ice racing, um, is on Facebook, that's the best way to go. Otherwise, if you search hard water ice racing.com, that's our website. That'll, that'll also tell you to go to Facebook. Um, but I, I basically, I, for me, I want to thank our, our crew that puts on the races. Um, you know, it's, it's a big list to list out, but all of our workers, they they bust their butts off and most time it's volunteering it just to say because they enjoy it and stuff like that and we don't always get everything right but we do the best we can and, and try to make it fair for everybody and and i want to thank those guys for doing that especially during the ice season so it allows me to do the racing i want to do so i appreciate that and and thank you 
thank you guys for you guys and James out there for sharing all the the photos and keeping it going out there on your end of it. I wish you'd just come work with me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he's getting fired. More. I, I think he's doing a lot more interest in, in your, your guys' events and things like that. Every time I see him and you guys talking back and forth and stuff, um, he, I think he, he's got the race itch and he wants to do it. He just, he doesn't want to do the dirt track stuff anymore, but he wants to do all the other stuff around it. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh see my wife loves dirt track uh pictures i'm i'm not a big fan um i like watching the crazy stuff <laughs> i guess i grew yeah. up watching wacky races <laughs> but uh sometimes them dirt tracks put on one heck of a show so i can't say oh, i definitely. don't like them because they've had me on my feet quite a few times yeah i've i'm i'm at north central almost every saturday night um and and because I hate money and love headaches, I ended up buying a Mod 4 this year. So I'm going to be out there playing with that this year and, and with my nephew and my brother and, and my cousin um, all in that class. So I, I decided to hop in there and, and try to beat up on those guys a little bit. And so it's been a long time since I made laps in North Central in the actual race car. We've done some off the, you know, one-off shows with different things and stuff like that. But it's it's been a long time. <laughs> so it's, it's always a lot of fun. Uh I guess any motorsports really, because it's always, it's always different. I guess you know it's uh, to switch it up to go try something new. Um, yeah, it's great. My, I mean, my like, biggest I appeal even... to me is one, I want to go out and race, and two, I want to go to the event that I can race at and don't have to work at. I can just show up and race and, and be a part of and stuff. Um, and then that's the other thing I love is, I mean, almost every single weekend we're, you know, Kendra was, wants to kill me because. We're doing something more sports one way or another. We're either putting on one of our 13 events that we do, or we're going, if we're not doing that, we're going to North Central. We're going someplace else or um, that. And, and the, the fun part is me just going and seeing all the other events, whether wh whatever and wherever it is, I don't care as long as it's making noise, I'm happy. So, Right on. Uh, yeah, and uh, I guess with that, we're going to switch over here. But thank you again for coming on. So, Definitely yeah, thank appreciate you guys. It. Appreciate yeah. it. And uh, when we get closer to your Bajas, if you want to get back on and give a shout out and, and get people reminded about your Baja, please let us know. I'll bring you on every time. For sure. We'd de definitely love to do that. So, well, Thanks again, Chad. You have a good night. All right, thank you. See ya. That was Chad Erlinson with uh, Hardwater Ice Racing. And uh, they do the Bajas for Brainerd, Ake, and Pine River. Is it Pine River? Yep. Awesome shows. I suggest if you happen to see them come up, you know, uh, run out there, take a look at the show, join the show even. I mean, right. building the car is pretty easy. Just got to make sure you got a cage in it. Um, looks like we may have a special guest, about three minutes. What? Yeah, and then we're going to be switching over to Ryan Ajo. What do we do now? Hello. Somebody there. Oh, I can't read that. Good. Let me make this big. Good evening. This is a PSA about horses. The ultimate ATV. I am saddled with so much responsibility. Or kind of been kicked. <laughs> I can't is it I can't see the word behind it there. Oh, because it's behind the live thing. Yeah, let me check here. Kicked around long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop. It really me make Makes us long in the face. I can see that. You always want your horsepower, yet you have none. One horse. You always want your more horsepower, yet... I didn't catch that one. The only time you are fast is when the girl doesn't want to, you to be. <laughs> <laughs> right, ladies? This <laughs> <Just love> horses. <laughs> Especially... If you have length and don't spur right out of the shoots. Oofta. <laughs> if you don't like that, Joe, get off your high horse. Oh. <laughs> huh. Any hay? What's. Any hay, Sloan and Dwayne are my main mans. <laughs> <laughs> They do what can't be done. 
make you look cool. I don't know how we're doing on this one, but <laughs> <laughs> instead of the nightmares, you really are. Nice. Now don't be talking crap. Or you will stir up trouble. <laughs> I think the puns are even worse than this one. <laughs> I guess I have been on here for long enough. Time to pass back the reins. <laughs> it's past your bedtime anyway. <laughs> truth, truth. Be nice to horses. <laughs> you have twit. <laughs> now watch me. What's he going to do, gallop off? <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah. And uh, this was the horse activist, and he is gone. All right. Now, Oofta. we're going to start Ryan's intro here, and then we'll be back to talk to Ryan. How's it going? It's going great. Uh, do I have good enough service here, or am I kind of breaking up a little bit? Well, your voice is coming through pretty good. Uh, video's a little jumpy, but that's okay. We can all still right. hear you. I'll try not to move then. I'm not really <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, that's all right. You can move all you want. So, all uh, right. Well, how are you guys doing? Good, we're good. doing good. We're doing good. Glad to have you on. Yeah, I'm just, I, I keep try I keep moving. I, I literally can't stand still, sit still. When I talk, everything's moving, and I see it's breaking up on the screen. But that's all right. You can maybe uh, you'll make it work. <laughs> yeah. No, the, it's okay if the the video is jumpy. I mean, it's it's cell phone, but your audio is great. Perfect. I'm out in Ohio right now. I I'm out driving truck, and I knew I had to stop. So I'm like, well, hopefully there's service here, but uh, it's a little bit sketchy. But I'll, we'll make do. Some Chinese weather balloons. We always run into that with the <laughs> truck drivers. It's like, ah, oh, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we got going on with the Grand Rapids Speedway this year? A lot. A lot. There's a lot of good things happening over there. And, and the goal this year, I mean, the, we want the racing to be good. We have some great specials, 10 late model nights this year. We have some really cool stuff happening. But my focus is I want, to, I want to build the fan base, right? So we want to do some cool stuff above and beyond just racing to get the fans involved. And uh, we have a lot of stuff this year that's going to do that. Super excited about that. Yeah, it, it seems like it's a pretty full schedule. Uh, we got some new stuff coming, uh, which we will talk about later in the, in the, in the show here, um, that I'm pretty excited about personally. Um, I know that the racing has been getting pretty crazy. They... They um, have been working on the track so much, making it wider. I mean, seeing three, four wide sometimes. Uh, there was quite a few years there we didn't see, but maybe a single file line. So the racing is definitely a lot more exciting. Um, you got We got three Enduros this year. Um, we actually have a memorial for the second one during the fair for Leroy Tramby. Uh, he's somebody who just uh, was a big part of the racetrack. He was on the board. Um big part of the enduro he actually was out there racing i don't even know how old he was but i know he shouldn't have been out on the track uh but he he got up got out there with everybody else and uh we definitely miss him and uh they're doing this memorial to definitely show him uh our love for this guy um we seen his wife at the meeting the last time and she was pretty happy about it as well you know, and that's important. I mean, there, 
it's a small community. Whether it's you know ice racing, the Chad was talking about, if it's derbies, if it's enduros, if it's dirt track racing, it's it's one big family. We're kind of all same, you know, part of that same culture. We might have different classes, a couple different things we do, but ultimately we all like to go fast, make noise, wreck shit, have a good time. And and Leroy was a big part of that. So being able to you know honor him with that because I know he was passionate about those enduros. Um, we're very happy to do that at the Grand Rapids Speedway. Yeah, it's it's been a good time. I mean, dealing with everybody there. Um, I've I've watched the changing of the um, the guard a couple times, but with we're working with Bob Broking and your dad and you and everybody else, and it and it is a big it's a big uh, how do you say it? Well, it you takes say a village. It, it takes a village to run this stuff, and uh, I mean look what look what has become of Grand Rapids where it's gone. Um, it was to the point nobody wanted to come to the track because the, the track was so rough and then we went through a little turmoil as we were building it and now look at it you know the, the banks are high it's fast it's wide and there's a lot of good people there right i mean the broking family as a whole you know they're passionate about dirt track racing they love it bob broking and his entire family they are not helping the racetrack they're not running it to make money because there's no money to be made it's an association right. You know, he's got enough stuff on his plate, but they looked at it between him and Jody and, you know, John and Johnny and Adri and, you know, everybody, the, all the whole family, right? They're all involved in one way, shape, or form to keep that place going. And then you add on top of that, right? You got Fred Hoschel, George Finkbone, you got Gary Regal, yourself. You got so many people, I mean, too many to mention that really make that deal go. And are you going to get it right every single night? unfortunately not right you're just not it's just you, you you do what you can to try to improve and try to create an environment where people from the community can come and be entertained every week all summer long and that's what we really try to do at the Donlinger Ford Grand Rapids Speedway and you guys are um you include the community a lot um I mean you, I know you guys brought in the kids for kicks um the, the dancing for the youngins um I've you brought in the VFW uh, bike giveaways i do believe they're giving away or not giving away they're raffling off a four-wheeler this year as well right they are they are so that's going to be exciting you know and and the more the better right because it's not just racing one thing racing you know what no matter what kind of racing it is it's a it's a culture right it is literally a lifestyle and we want more people in the community to really be able to be part of that ecosystem and that's what we're trying to do over there Yes, and uh, with the Derby coming in for the Saturday of the Fair, I'm hoping we're going to be adding a new, a new culture into this. Um, those guys definitely are a real close-knit group. Um, you travel anywhere in the state, and they're pretty much the same, and I'm sure it's the same way with Minnesota. I mean, you used to raise. I mean, how many championships or trophies have you won? I got, I got a few. I was very fortunate in my racing career. I, I wish I was still doing it. I really do, but... Um, on to different things in life now still part of the still part of the community <clears throat> you know i have a podcast i do so we have some stuff that we're doing involving racing but you know national championships i won track championships you know countless invitationals but again just like running a racetrack that took a whole lot of people to make that happen i just held the steering wheel i set it up i got i, I raced it but i had a lot of people helping me a lot of sponsors my family there was a lot of people involved to really be able to allow me to do what I wanted to do. Right. And uh, you touched on your podcast and you and you're kind of talking about how things have changed from when you were driving to now. I mean, how would you explain that the best way? Is there a short way? Yeah, the two things, right? Culture and money. Number one, right now, let's face it. I mean, everything in life is more expensive. And right. that includes race cars, right? You know, so that that makes racing tough because it is so hard for the average person to be able to afford to race at a high level. So right. we, we're trying to put a little bit more focus on some of the grassroots stuff. That's why I love what you guys have going on, you know, with everything that you're part of, because that's grassroots type stuff doesn't take, you know, $50,000 to compete. So that's important. Now, on the flip side of it, the culture. You know, back in the day when I was racing, I think the biggest thing I noticed is there was more people coming down in the pits and 
interacting with the drivers and, and the fan bases were passionate, right? You either loved somebody, you hated them, they were cheering, they were booing. And we need to get some of that back. We got to get some of them rivalries going. We got to get some more people passionate about racing and meeting the drivers. And that takes getting more people to the racetrack each and every week. I completely agree with that. I mean, you guys brought back last year, was it last year or two years ago, um, the meet the drivers night. And that was a huge success. I still have videos of me walking through the crowds. Uh, every car, it was, it was just packed, the whole front stretch. Cars, fans, drivers, it was awesome. Yeah, and we have a couple things along, along those lines that we do. So I'm taking a look here. So the meet the drivers night this year is June 22nd. So you want to put that on your calendar. But every single week, all season long, we're going to have the country kitchen fan experience to where we're going to draw somebody out of the crowd, a kid, a family, whatever, where they can come down in the infield in the Pepsi fan zone, watch a feature of their choice from the infield. They get to go down in victory lane, hand the trophy out, meet the driver, get a picture with the car. Um, some of them interactive things is what we really want to do. We're excited about that. Sloan, we got kids rides, right? Wednesday of the Itasca County Fair, on, on that Wednesday, kids, get your parents to bring you to the racetrack because you get to actually ride around the track at intermission in race cars. So that nice. is going to be super cool also. Oh, that's, that's awesome. I mean, we used to do that when we were kids. Um, my uh, Everybody come out. I think I even rode in. Finkbone's car around the track a couple times. Um, but to get out there, ride around in the car, and uh, got it. I, I'm sure it was a little bit different back then. We used to pile them sky high with people. But uh, it's awesome. It's a good time. I mean, especially if you've never been in a race car, you've never got to feel that motor. Um, you get to feel the track while you're rolling around it. I mean, obviously, you're not going super fast. So it's. Yeah, if you're a kid and you want to get out there, get your parents to bring you in. It's an experience okay. you won't forget. I never did. Absolutely. And I have a challenge, too. If you're a race fan, if you're somebody watching this, you go to the races regularly, bring somebody that's never been to the races, right? Bring somebody new. But here's the key. If you bring somebody new, get a hold of me, get a hold of Bob, get a hold of one of us, because we're going to try to make it that if you bring somebody new, that we're going to allow you to go in the pits before the races so you can actually introduce that new person to some drivers so that way when the races happen later on that night, they will have met some people and now they have somebody to cheer for that they actually um, were able to meet before the races. So if you bring somebody new, get a hold of me, get a hold of Bob, get a hold of Sloan if you're there, you know, get a hold of one of us because we want to make that happen. That's a really cool concept. I mean, that's given a personal interaction with somebody that's never done it before, um, that should make them be screaming in the stands, after, you know, when that when that guy gets out there for his heat race. That That's really cool. I really like that idea. I really like that idea, too. Yeah, I, I, I'm super excited about it. And NHRA drag racing does that down in Brainerd. I mean, I've talked to yeah. people that have been to the NHRA Nationals. Your pit pass essentially is, or your grandstand pass and the pit pass are the same thing. So you can actually go interact and you can do that. And, and I learned this, guys, because I raced for years. I'm a big race fan. But I've gone to races where I didn't know anybody, right? Right. Derek Hansen used to run, run and fly around the track. That, that was a day or two. That was a day or two ago. His um, dad used to pit for Doug And, and the fact Boss. is, if you don't know anybody. Oh, okay, Dougie. There you go. He's got a couple kids out there <laughs> racing. Excuse me. So I'm kind of getting old, guys. When when <laughs> when now we see their kids out there racing, and not just not just the old man. So kind of cool and a shout out there. But but that's the thing. You you've gotta you gotta get the people involved. You gotta have some fun with this sport. It's gotta be more than just racing. On the racing side, jump on our Facebook page, Grand Rapids Speedway. You know we have the full schedule on there. It's it's underneath the gallery. We have it in the gallery, but it's also in the comments. So you can just look under photos under 2023 schedule. And you'll see our full schedule there. Um, Ten late model shows, a couple big shows that we have, the Fast Lane Super Stock Series coming back to town. Dylan Nelson won that last year. We'll see if maybe a local guy can win that this year. We had the Advantage RV Mod Tour, which is no longer a thing. Johnny Broking, local guy, actually won that two years in a row. This year, we're going to have a Summer Sizzler Modified Weekend, Hibbing, 
and Bemidji, along with Grand Rapids, a three-night swing, pretty good money for the Modifieds. And, of course, uh, um, down uh, during the fair on that Wednesday, we're going to have the Dean Olofsson Memorial, which is going to be an invitational race for <coughs> the Hornets and for the Pierce Stocks. More money on the line for them. And, of course, the uh, what, what annual is it? The 29th annual Wissota Classic. That's kind of the caps off the season. And the showcase for that is going to be the 25th year of the structural building with Soda Late Model Challenge Series coming into the town. So lots of exciting things happening at the racetrack this year. Um, got to get involved. We got to get more people there. We got to have some fun with it. Got to create that culture. I got an idea for, for your buddy here. So Chad mentioned that he goes to North Central. Yep. And so he's been he's been around racing, right? What's your thoughts on having them get that ice racing group together and saying, hey, we're going to have one night at the racetrack where the ice racing cars, if you want to bring them up, are part of the show. They can race it on dirt. Oh, I'm sure they'd probably be interested in that. I'll have to get a hold of them on that. I mean, they obviously can't run their studs, but it'd almost be like uh, enduro without uh, Exactly. You can just get different <laughs> tires for them. They can, they can be part of the program. We would love to have them up if you can maybe put me in contact try to make that happen, get some new people, right? That would get new people that don't always come to the Grand Rapids Speedway there. So that right. would be super fun. He has a Mod 4 Sloan Wednesday of the fair. Mod 4s are coming to town that night too. So make sure he brings his Mod 4 up. Oh, oh man. They're, uh, they're pretty fun to watch. Definitely different. Uh, I was looking at uh, the ones that were up there last year. And uh, they look so small, but you get up close, they ain't as small as you think they are. No, and they're dicey. I mean, them things are really, really dicey. Them little tires, they're they're fidgety out there. And it seems like those cars can kind of maneuver around the track because they have such little tires. They can kind of create multiple lanes of racing. So hopefully we get a pretty good turnout of those. Yeah, definitely. It would be, uh, well, I can say this. In the multiple years I've been at the racetrack there, uh, what you guys are doing uh, with the board, the Brokings, uh, Regal, you, your dad, I mean, it's just exploded. And and you guys have done a very good job with Grand Rapids Speedway. And now it's starting to get that uh, reputation of the track being bad changed. And the uh, the new people in to be introduced to everybody. And I'm already seeing things turn around. I see more people in the stands. Um, I see a lot more interest in the Grand Rapids Speedway. Um that's just kind of how life is though. You know, it works and you guys came in and you're doing a great job. I don't know if anybody tells you enough. I just want to tell you that myself. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm just a small part of what goes on over there. I'm, I'm kind of working remotely, right? I'm, I live in Illinois now. Um, I'm driving a truck over the road, so I'm not able to be there very often, <clears throat> but the, the whole group they have over there, they really mesh well together. I'm just happy to be part of it. And, uh, championship battles this year, Sloan. This is an interesting deal, too. So last year, um, the track champion, Rick Nemi and the late models, okay? okay? So the Nemi family as a whole have been racing for, like, over 50 years, right, as a family. Okay. Rick Nemi was the first one ever to win a track championship. So that was really cool, and he did it by one point. Zach Wallers didn't think it was so cool because he was the guy that was one point behind. <laughs> So he was a little disappointed in that, and he was super fun to watch. Um, Rick Nemi had a great year. Zach Wallers was super fun to watch. Provenzino got third, and if you're a late model fan, that is three non I call them non-typical cars. Um, Provenzino builds his own 28 specials, Rick Nemi and an SSR, and uh, Zach Wallers kind of does his own thing. He's got a Wally built deal. Now, the Modifieds. Bob Broking showed his son, Johnny, that he's still the man in Grand Rapids. <laughs> Johnny is a phenomenal race car driver. But Dad kind of whooped his ass a little bit last year in Grand Rapids, guys. I tell you, Johnny, uh, he said, I got to get a little bit better there. I'm not letting Dad do that again this year. So we'll find out. But there's a kid that comes over from Bemidji every week, Josh Bolio. He had a really good year last year, too. He actually got second. Johnny got third. Now, in the Super Stocks, in the Midwest Mods and in the Pure Stocks, we're going to not have a back-to-back -back champion because the Super Stock Track champion, Don Smith, who's won multiple championships at the Grand Rapids Speedway, sounds like he's jumping up into an A-Mod. 
<laughs> oh boy, that Midwest should be modified. exciting. Yeah, Tyler Kittner, who has been an absolute rock star in the Midwest Modified Division, also moving to an AMOD. So oh, this two of them good. right there, Chad. Yeah, Chad Finkbone, who won the Pure Stocks a couple different years in a row here, national champion two years ago. Rumor has it that he's going to spend the year focusing on helping his kid race. Not sure if we're going to see Chad behind the wheel here. Um, I've heard a couple different things, but it sounds like he might not be racing. And if he does, it might be for somebody else very part-time. So we're going to see a different one there. Could it be a second-generation or two third-generation drivers is what we have. So we have Austin Carlson. He's a third-generation Carlson because Ted and then Tim and then Austin. He got second in points. Chaston Finkbone got third in points, third-generation driver. Of course, George Finkbone still involved with the racetrack. Chad Finkbone, his dad, and now he's a third-generation driver. So super cool seeing some of these youngsters come in. Speaking of youngsters in the Hornet division, Justin Barsness won it last year, uh, just a teenager out there. And, of course, uh, we've seen the Barsness family win a lot of races, including in the Enduros. Um, we've mm-hmm. seen Jake Barsness get her done there. So it's going to be exciting to see who takes home them championships, but it's going to be new champions in a couple of classes this year. This is going to be pretty good. Um, I know we're going to be taking pictures down there. Uh, my wife definitely uh, already said she was going to be doing it. But uh, the Brokings, the, the, the father and son, love watching them race. It's always back and forth, yeah. slide jobs, whatever it takes. Uh, Bob gets a little... Down and dirty sometimes. You know, rub his son, push him up the corner. You know, it's, <laughs> it's a blast to watch. Um, Tyler Kittner, 22. Uh, not seeing him there and watching him go up against Donnie Smith in the A-Mods is going to be good. Not only that, but they're with the Brokings. Right. Right. So, that I mean, you got... That A-Mod division, they struggled the last few years for car counts. I think they're going to have a pretty good field of cars this year. And like you said... When you have two veteran drivers that have won championships in other classes coming up, I'm telling you what, Johnny Broken's pretty confident, right? He's a hell of a race car driver. Bob's confident. But both of those two have won a lot of races. I wouldn't call them out. No. All right. So it should be get pretty wild. I mean, I know I'll be watching. <laughs> uh, and if anybody wants to watch this stuff, Dirt Race Central actually films it for the racetrack. Yeah, they do a great job. You know, John... John comes down every week. So that is uh, Dirt Race Central. You know, you can jump online. You can actually watch it on pay-per-view. You can subscribe to it if you can't. Maybe on a Thursday night, you had to work. You weren't able to watch it. You can buy a subscription and watch all the replays as well. And if you have a subscription, you can actually go from years back, and you can watch multiple years of racing, not just from Grand Rapids, but from all kinds of Wissota tracks throughout the region. And that subscription, I think it's only like 15 or $20 a month, so it's definitely worth having. Right. Well, it, like you go over to Brokings, and you have their garage. I mean, right. they got a nice TV on the wall. They play uh, Dirt Race Central through there, um, so you can sit and BS and watch all the races, all the good ones. You know, remember that time you won, if that's what it is. Um, yeah, they, I wish they were taping it. Well, maybe. Right, I wish they were taping it back when I raced. <laughs> but then on the flip side, you know, I, I can tell all these stories about how fast I used to be, and there's no proof that I wasn't. So I mean, so there, there is that, and there's probably some moments I probably didn't want taped either. I might have. The fish is that big. Another thing we're doing slow. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So another thing they're doing, and we don't have all the details worked out quite yet. We're we're really close, but. For sure, for the early portion of the year, either it's going to be the first couple of nights, maybe a little bit longer, 18 and under are going to get free admittance into the grandstands for the for the races at the Donlinger Ford Grand Rapids Speedway. Oh, that's a good deal. Yeah, we want we want to get them teenagers there. We want to get them youngsters there. We want to get them involved. We want we want to make Grand Rapids Speedway the place to be, right? And if we can let them in free. You know, pass that along. If you got some buddies, say, hey, we ain't got to pay. Get your butt over there to the racetrack. Get a hold of somebody. Go meet some drivers. Find out some people that you want to cheer for. And 
sometimes it's more fun. Find some people that you want to cheer against, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. get a big group together. Figure out who you're going to boo, right? I mean, you know, we got, you know, if you want to cheer for Bob Broking, boo the shit out of Johnny Broking, right? If you want to, <laughs> if you want to cheer for Zach Walters, boo Jeff Provenzino, right? They, right? they like it. It's all good. Whatever, whatever gets the crowd going, we're all good with it. We want some excitement. Well, watching those guys lift that tire, Robin... I don't even know how they do these slide jobs without crashing sometimes, but inches off each each other. It's pretty good to watch. Yeah, it can be exciting. And sometimes those slide jobs, sometimes you don't miss, right? Sometimes you connect <laughs> with the right recorder panel. That may have happened a time or two, but I'll be honest with you. One of my favorite guys to watch over there in the late models, Zach Wallers. I mean, that dude is flat out up on the wheel. You get a little bit of something up on top, and he's going to take every inch of that racetrack and use it. And every little ounce of what the race car has to offer, he's always going to find a little bit more. Sometimes he crosses the line, but he's super fun to watch, along with so many others over there. And you were talking about Provenzino. He has that 28 special. He sells uh, pre-built late models, right? Yeah, he actually builds his own chassis right over in Hibbing, Minnesota. You know, late models is a top class, and uh, typically people buy that from, you know, Rocket, Longhorn, all these national MB Customs, these, these companies all over the place. We have a couple chassis builders right in Hibbing, one of them being 28 Specials, Jeff Provenzino, another one being TRC Race Cars, Mark Reiney. And he's right over there in Hibbing as well, multiple national championships in various classes. So... Some of the best race cars in all of Wasota are built right here on the Iron Range. That's crazy. Now, I've watched Jeff, too. I mean, we've been taking pictures for a few years now. I mean, I've went to the races quite a few times myself. But uh, watching him, he has slowly been sneaking his way to the front of the pack. Every year, he's, he's further in the front. I mean, he was never far back, but he's always moving forward. <coughs> So I actually expect lull, to see him right? do pretty he good this year. Yes, you're right. You hit the you hit on something. So Provenzino, I mean, starting back in the 90s, that cat won races, right? And, and everything he was in, he was very, very fast. He had a little bit of a lull, right? Probably trying to figure out that new chassis they're building, you know, and trying to get things going. But last year, I think, is the best year he's had in a, in a little while. He, he could be somebody to watch here this year for sure. I... Uh... And watch him wheel that car around the track. I definitely expect to see him in the front more often than not. I do believe he won. Uh, I don't remember if it was a heat or a feature. I think it was a feature uh, this last year. He won the NLRA. So the NLRA late models came to town last year. It's a traveling series thrown by Grand Forks, North Dakota. This year they're not coming this far east, so we're not going to have them. But uh, some of their, their top drivers came over, and Jeff Provenzano sent him away crying. He, he took home the paycheck in that one. <laughs> it's always good when local guys are winning. But yeah, in, in the Wasota Classic, the big one, I think we only had we only had one local guy win that. So uh Broking, Provenzino, Wallers. So we we gotta get her together here, guys. You know, last year right. Jesse Glenn's got it done in the late model, Shane Sabraski in the mod and super, Zach Benson in the Midwest mod, of course Chad Pinkbone was the lone local guy winning the Wasota Classic last year. You can't be letting these other towners come in and take your money. Like, like, that can't be a thing, right? So <laughs> right. You gotta, when they come in, you got to send them home crying is what you got to do. I'm definitely looking forward to a good year. I mean, we you, you've went through and you've ex- let us know, you know, the championships, who's going to be running close. Um, we got three Enduros. Uh, the track is actually going to be drier this year. The cars are going to be moving faster. Um, it ain't going to be a mud fest like it has been. So that's going to be a very exciting deal. Um, most people are used to looking like a mud run. Um, but it ain't going to be like this year. So if you are wanting to run a car yeah, or you want to come watch, the action is going to be a lot more exciting. Um, then we have... Yeah, those, those... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say those Bud Light and Duros are always good, right? They're always exciting. You know, and this, there was what, last year there was five, was there, and six year before? Yeah, I think there was five last year, and uh, we had done a two-day at the end. Uh, we weren't growing really enough uh, attraction to them for what they were. Uh, maybe we could try again in the future. Um, 
but we're going to dry the track out and let, let it be a lot faster. Um, let the competition be a lot more fierce. Uh, see how this all turns out. I mean, there's a lot of drivers. I think we were averaging about 60 last year. But uh, hopefully we see the numbers come up. I know with the cost of iron and cars, it's definitely hurt the numbers. Um, but it should be a good time. should be uh, the Bud Light Enduros are always fun. I'd love to get a car out there myself, but we'll have to see for time. And it really shouldn't hurt. You know, even if the, even if the scrap price is up, race the car, go tear some shit up then scrap it right, right. You still get to scrap it either way so you don't have to scrap it go go race it and there's only three of them this year there's only three of them so make sure that you you know look at the schedule get those dates down and you know you only have three opportunities don't be going well i'll, I'll be at the next one because there's only three and, and we'll have a camera in the crowd uh, we will be recording all the enduros this year uh, so you will you'll be able to go back on our youtube watch all the live replays on that or not live replays but replays i think they do want me to run one of them live uh to let everybody see how things are there and how they run uh so hopefully we get some new people as well absolutely and, and thank you for what you do i mean you you've done a lot you know hey you said i do a lot and the brokies do a lot but you do a lot of behind the scenes stuff the promoting that you've done here with uh with your company, it was High Octane Media, right? Is that what yes. it is? I wanted to make sure I had that right. I got a good <laughs> memory, but it's really short. I'm just a truck driver here. But, uh, you know, you do a lot of stuff. A lot of people don't know, like, you just do that for the love of the sport, right? It's yeah. not like uh, it's not like you're getting rich doing this deal. You're doing it because you're passionate about all the different aspects of motorsports, you know, whether it be enduros or ice racing or dirt track racing or ATVs or mud bogs or whatever it may be. You're, you're very well-rounded in, in what you do, and it's very well appreciated. Yeah, a lot. Of, we, we've been asked how much money we make a few times. People think we make a <laughs> fortune. <laughs> but our bank accounts pay for our way to most shows. Um, if it's a far show, because I think we have four shows in North Dakota we're going to this year as far as uh, we're covering the State Fair uh, demo out in North Dakota. Uh, but those guys are giving us some help with, with gas to get out there and whatnot but i mean we put on twenty thousand miles last year between april was it april yeah no may was it may between may and, and september september yeah. yeah so we spent a little bit of butt time in the car in the little scissor mobile <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's getting after it there's nothing wrong with that you got to have some fun so well i i got uh, speaking of turning laps and hitting the gas and turning a steering wheel i I probably got to jump on the road here. Uh, I got uh, we got these ELBs, right? These electronic log books. We call them uh, <laughs> yeah. pains in the ass, is what it is, right? I, yep. I can sit here and talk all night about racing, but my clock's telling me that I only have X amount of time to get to where I gotta go. So I probably should be doing that. But guys, thanks for having me on. I'm yeah, thanks for coming on. About the twenty twenty three season over there. So um, in, in closing, thank you for everything you do in racing, get over to the Grand Rapids Speedway this year. And we're going to be showcasing our sponsors all year long on the Facebook page. So just keep an eye on the Grand Rapids Speedway Facebook page and take a note of all the sponsors that support what we love and try to support those businesses when you can. Well, thank you again, Ryan, for coming on. We definitely appreciate you and everything you and your family and everybody else at the track is doing. Uh, watch that thing become something of a what would you call a legend <laughs> because it, we never would have thought it was going to get there uh track quality uh the people that that work there are amazing uh they put in time when they don't need to i mean so i can completely understand that that's that's where i learned all this that's why i do what i do you, you don't want to kill the sport by charging people too much so you just kind of go do it the sky's the limit. We're just getting started. So yeah, right. I, you guys have a great night, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. You have a good night, Ryan. Thanks again. So that was Ryan Aho with uh, the Grand Rapids Speedway. He does run a podcast over on Facebook. It's called The One to Go Show. 
if you guys are big into Wasoda and racing, he's got all the info. He knows exactly what's going on with the, with the racers, the tracks, and they go through and they let everybody know uh, what's going on, where the where the best stuff was, the crazy stuff was going on. Uh, but get over there and uh, watch his podcast. Uh, definitely puts a lot of time and heart into this stuff. Yeah, I appreciate him coming on. Uh, the Grand Rapids Speedway has got a lot of racing action going on. A lot of stuff for the kids, for families. Um, what's that was? You get in for free if you bring somebody who's never been to the races this year. They're bringing the brand new guys in the pits before oh, that's what the is. race. Yeah. That's going to be really cool. I, I really... I I really like that idea. I do. And let's let's be real on this. On a Thursday night in the summertime, the first couple of races, you're 18 or under, you're getting in free. Right, right. That's awesome. That's freaking phenomenal. Right. And that's it's it's amazing that uh I mean, we've never thought about any of this stuff before. No. You know, to, to bring to bring these guys down and bring them into the pits. I mean, I I'm down there all the time, so it's it's, right. it's but uh, if getting down there for your first time to see the late models and the and the A mods and, and up close and, and you see talk to these people. Yeah, talk to these people. The drivers are great people. Um, we've gotten to know a lot of them. Oh, uh, I, I mean, like I've spent a lot of time with Turnkey Racing. Right. Yeah. Uh, they actually started in enduro, and then moved up into sprints. Um, who else moved up? Uh, Danny, well, Danny Waite's part of that team. Yep, yep. Uh, Zach Olson, and um, I, I, those two came from Enduro for sure. Right. Um, who else moved? There was there was a lot of other people. Some moved up into Hornets. You got Marty Service. Yeah. Uh, he moved up from Enduro into, into Hornets. I believe he's actually moving up a class from that this year. Really? Yeah, he was he, he was selling his, his uh, Hornet online, and he said he was moving up into a new class. So I don't nice. know if it's a Midwest mod or if it's a... Uh, pure stock or no i know it's not a pure stock no but it might okay. i think it might be a midwest mod that he's moving up into that'd be neat to see yeah so that that's pretty cool i mean a I'm mod gonna... for invitational this year that's <laughs> that's super cool i love yeah. seeing them little things rip they're they're little blast. chainsaws running yeah, around <laughs> i also so, call them the pissed off bumblebees yeah that's about it yeah and then we got um what else did he say oh we got we got three enduros going on this year um the first one's going to be in july and then we got the fair, the fair one in fair, August, yeah. and then we got the next one in September. Yeah, um, closes out the season. The, the fair, the, the fair one was for uh, Leroy Tramby. Yep. Um, great guy. Big, huge part of the track. Um, he was big part of enduro. He was big part of racing. I mean, on the board, uh, in a car. He was 70-something, and he was racing an right. enduro truck. Right. Or, he was racing that blue uh, Dakota. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and we're going to cover all three of those. Yep. The way our schedule looks, it's probably going to be that second crew that's going to be covering them three. Um, I had touched on it earlier this in our off season that I was going to try to get out there for the fair enduro. That could possibly still happen, but now, now comes the big thing. We got the derby back. We do got the derby back. I'm pretty. So excited now I'm about really that. conflicted because it's like, yeah, I've I've definitely spent uh, I've spent some hours in enduro cars in my life. Now, I've spent a lot less in derby cars, and and we've already decided if we got the derby back that we were going to uh, not only build a couple of derby cars this year, which all of our derby buddies out there, we're dumb, we need help, <laughs> give yeah. us pointers, because we're going to need that. But we're going to document that this yeah. year. Um, anybody that would like to sponsor either of our derby cars, um, please send us some messages. Uh We'd love to have some sponsors, and we'd love to showcase those sponsors for that that yeah. that derby. You know, yeah. this is five years we haven't seen a derby in Rapids, and uh, it's it's not just going to be a redneck hillbilly demo. Uh, WFO is going to come in and put it on. Right. Um, it's right. but they're not running mods. These rules are are have the ability to be built by me and you and anybody else who has, right. has, has, has right. never has never derbied before. So um, as he releases those classes, he'll have the rules. You know, he's already got the rules for all the classes up there. So as he releases those classes, it's easy to read, easy to comp- comprehend. We just, I haven't, I haven't ran a derby car since you could literally, I, I took a shotgun, knocked the windows out of it, um, threw some chains on the doors and destroyed it. That, that was the last one I ever ran. 
And uh, besides my enduro cars, JP Sweet says, "Looking forward to the Derby over there." Um, he is going to be coming down as a guest announcer. We got the special guest announcer, yeah. JP Sweet. Going to have to roll out the red carpet. Oh man, we're going to go through <laughs> red carpet this year. Oh, if yeah. you know anybody that has like that indoor outdoor carpet in red, <laughs> send us a message because we're going to need something. Tate says, "No sandbagging." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I probably will be out in the first couple minutes because if, if there's a mad dog, well, even if there is no mad dog, <laughs> right. I kind of want that mad dog trophy. Um, somebody tonight said, w- once these guys get their helmets on, they shut their brains off, and I was like, God, I resemble that remark. <laughs> you know, I was like, man, that's me to a T. So I'm pretty excited yeah. about that. I mean, hopefully I hit somebody and not the, <laughs> right. not the wall, you know what I mean? Here, so, here comes Sloan, <laughs> bang, into the barrier, dead. Damn it! <laughs> well, at least everybody would be laughing and having a good time, right? right. <laughs> you know, so I mean, I don't know. Like Tate, Tate's on here. He says no sandbagging. Definitely don't plan on that. Yeah. And Derek Hansen here. He says was always a fun place to derby. Ran over there a few times. Just got to watch out for the slop towards the stretch wall. Caught air a few times. No, they're actually putting uh, they're actually putting um, concrete barriers up on the berm. So you can't. So go, you don't fall over so into the yeah, grandstands. So you don't fall over into the grandstands now. So you'll actually be left on the front stretch, um, out of the slop. Um, the prep is going to be according to how um, Tyler feels it should be. They, right. The right. track's prepping it, but by what he wants. Yep. Um, I can't release any payouts or anything yet, but I've heard some of the talk. I'm very excited. I mean, we're on an island here. They know that. Right. They're going to be having some good payouts. It'll be worth it um, Heck yeah. to check it out, at least uh, give it a chance if you can come support it. Yeah, if you're following any of WFO shows, you already know what the rules are. You already know how to build a car. We're inviting all of you guys. Get over here. Have some fun. Um, if you think you're traveling too far, I've got a private campground at my house. I'll, I'll park every redneck in the freaking state there all overnight. I don't care. Right. And, I mean, I, I got a yard. I got I got right. a house with a couple bedrooms if I know, you know. Um we're trying to work things out to try to figure it out. You can camp right in the park. At, well, I don't know about the fair. I don't know. Probably not at probably the fair. Not fair. But they have they have a camp. There's campgrounds around here um, sure. where you don't got to go too far either. Um, there's a lot of campgrounds around here. I mean, that's right. literally what runs this town. So absolutely. Um, go on vacation. Take the vacation for the week. Come up, enjoy the fair. Right. I mean, Friday you got the enduro. If you don't know what that is or never been to one of our enduros, they are not the same as Wadena or anybody else. We do not run the same type of enduro. Uh, ours are a full contact sport. Yeah, um, I, I did hear rumor that there could possibly even be an enduro car class in this derby. That that's kind of what I was I, hearing too. I, I kind of heard that rumor. I I I can't confirm or deny that. I can't confirm or deny. But you know, I I do know for a fact that every one of my enduro cars met its fate not on an enduro track but in a derby arena. So um, what a great way to finish off a car. Well, we've been trying to we've been kind of tossing around the last few years trying to get a derby going with the enduro. Uh, But being that they don't run cages, we had to slop up the track pretty good. Right. right. Um, Now, if there is an enduro class, you have to have a cage in your car, and they have to meet the enduro standards. Um, The derby standards. The derby, well, the enduro standards, because it's an enduro class. So it's got to be able to be ran in enduro with a cage. It has to have a cage. You cannot run it in the derby without a cage. If that comes to be, uh, that's just the talk so far. Can't promise anything. At this I'd point in time, it. they're still working things out. I, I would hate to, to promise we, you something and have it not come We didn't through. honestly even find out that this was going to come full circle for us until Monday night. Monday night at the Grand Rapids Speedway so, um, meeting. They decided that, that the demo was happening. Um, a lot of the stuff hasn't been released. I mean, I have an idea because I've talked to some people, but I still I can't say right, because right. That, might, that may change till everything's on, on paper and signed. Absolutely. Um, very excited, though. And then... JP says, planning on getting my feet wet in the Enduro Friday night and excited to hold my vo- to hold my voice WFO with Tyler and the boys Saturday night. Nice. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be wild. It's it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, very excited. I mean, Tyler's the one that got me started along along this line of following Derby, Derby's, and then yeah. he introduced me to Josh Stock and uh, Dylan Sandvig, and and yeah. actually we ended up. I I met JP for the first time at Fertile in. The, at a WFO show. Right. I mean, we've talked, right. but I didn't meet him until he came down and, and watched that derby. Sure. Uh, and yeah, another thing, gonna gonna hit at it real quick here. JP is putting on that derby up in Low County Fair at the Low County Lake Fair. Lake of the Woods County Fairgrounds. Now, they did a hybrid between Josh Stock's rules and with WFO rules. I believe it's WFO front, Josh Stock rear, uh, back, back part of the cars. That's his rules. So, is that. 
No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a hybrid between the two sets of rules. And I was going to say, is that like liquor in a front poker? <laughs> <laughs> but I, that, that's not, well, I guess I just said it. Didn't Gambling it? and lo- liquor. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, check that out. I mean, it, it's definitely, uh, if you want to help support, we definitely want you to support us here in Rapids so we can have more. They want to have a derby every year. Um, I'd love to see that. I, I would love to see it. And uh, the better it gets, the bigger it gets, the bigger the payouts get. And I'm telling you right now, from what I'm understanding, it's, it's going to be, be worth one. the travel. It's going to be a good one. So um, definitely bigger for the area, I'd say. Right. But uh, we've, we're we just like kids in candy store right <laughs> yes, now. Yes, we are. You so. know, we, this is five years that us two idiots have been going, well, why haven't we had a derby here? Why haven't we had a derby here? We need to have a derby here. So, yeah, we're, we're ecstatic about this. Um, this can be a great time for us. Yeah, especially if I get to run one for the first time. Right. And, your boy, he can run camera, or I, I somebody s- can run camera. I, I don't. Yeah, they'll, right. They'll, we'll figure it out. I got, I got more than enough time between now and August to teach somebody to run a camera. Right, to, right. To get us. So, um, it's funny because me and him will be talking back and forth on the phone, and we're both stressing about this thing that's like <laughs> five months away. Right. Um, but then we're like, ah, oh, yeah, that's not. We don't even need to stress about it. We got more than enough time to figure it out. Um. Been working on trying to get a derby into Rapids here the last couple of years. They had monster trucks last year. They decided to go with a derby this year, and I'm, I'm super pumped about that. You know, um, everybody, since you touched on that, everybody was telling me last year, oh, man, you you, you got to be just going nuts because they're going to have monster trucks there. And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> like, they, they, they found out the hard way, I think, that um, it's just not the facility to have a truck of that caliper there. Um. Now, a derby car, derby car fits in, in that facility perfectly. It's going to be, yeah. I mean, the ring's, the ring's going to be pretty big. I mean, it's a whole yeah, front stretch. Right. So if you want to see a full track shot, <laughs> it, it's going to be a pretty full track shot. Um, I'm not quite sure how they're doing the seating yet or not, but I know that if there is enough interest, they may be uh, doing a VIP. Well, I shouldn't even say that. I don't know, but I suggest that they put a VIP down there. Absolutely. Alongside the track side. We see it in Bagley. Yeah. We see it a lot of these different derbies we go to. Right. Um, they put a beer tent out there, and, and they yeah. put a VIP stands up, put some food down there, and uh, they're right there in the front of the action. Right. Um, definitely would love to see that. Maybe that's uh, definitely something I'm going to have to touch on with those guys. That's we got some months to, there. months to plan yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, we, uh, might be, we might be a little giddy yet, but. What's this say? No one was supposed to know about the wine tasting and poker tourney in the back. <laughs> and that was super secret TikTok announcement. Oh, dang it. Oh, <laughs> only on your TikTok there, JP. Right. <laughs> oh, I pushed the wrong button. Um, but yeah, get out Friday. Watch the uh, watch the Enduro. That'd be August 18th. I mean, we do have one in July as well. And then we have uh, the Saturday of August. That'd be, the, well, actually, I should say Wednesday is racing at the mod fours yeah mod four invitational and i'm and a hornet invitation and 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 then thursday night is just regular is a regular racing night for them and then friday night's the enduro 100 laps of mayhem track's going to be drier it should be phenomenal and then saturday night is the derby oh boy and i am super excited to see i i mean i've already heard from people from over there by bagley that are going to be coming super pumped for these guys to to get out on this track, it'll be worth your time to get over and run this thing. Um, just believe me on that one; you'll see in the future here. Right on. Um, it is. It should be WFO regular rules, but those haven't been released yet. So, so we'll um, all wait and see that. So we'll wait and see on the rule set. Wait and see what classes he's going to run. Right. We're not positive yet. But with the enduro class being done, if you decide you want to try the enduro out on Friday night. Not only do you have a chance to win $1,000 there, but then you get to take that car as long as you don't blow the engine up. Right. <laughs> and you can run it in. Because none of us have ever done that. <laughs> I, I've only done it a few times. Right. I think right. three-fourths of the times. Right. Um, so, and then going into Saturday night, you can take that car and you can make another chance to make more money. Right. So it could be a two-day deal for you during the fair. I mean, it, it, the crowd is huge. They're loud. You know, they, they get a blast. They just get pumped, and I'm telling you, I've seen them at the derbies and at the enduros. The enduros are big, but that, but the fair, I think people are sitting on laps and they're cheering and they're loud. And, oh, yeah. and if you were disappointed by the last derby, I promise you that you will not be disappointed by this derby. Right, right. We we just wiped the slate clean, 
started with a great promoter. Um, this one's new, fresh, and intense. Yeah, Trent says it sounds like it's time to put a car together. Uh, you know, we just seen Chris at the meeting, and it sounds like he's putting a car together. Heck yeah. The last time we seen Chris in any kind of derby was with his enduro car when we were when we kind of just half butt threw one together. Right. And he put on a show. He drove over top of the rear of another car. <laughs> he had the crowd going nuts. So yeah, Trent, love to see you in another derby car, bud. Heck yeah. Hope you get out there. But with that, I think we, we've run. Yeah, pretty we're running late. way late. I mean, there's, actually, there's still 11 people on watch. It's, it's the horse. Yeah, it must the, be the horse. The horse got us running late. <laughs> oh, yeah. But he was only on here for like two minutes. Right, no. Yeah. no. He'd only been on here for a minute if you could read. <laughs> oh, God, now we're on here for another, we've been on here a half hour over talking. I so. know, I know. All right, guys. We got excited. We're sorry. <laughs> we did, we did. We're super excited for this demo. I'm um, going to be seeing a lot of ads for me most likely. And uh, all the support you guys got, if, if you feel you owe us anything, we're going to take that, that calling card now. We'd love to have you come run with us. Absolutely. So you have a good night. <laughs> if you hate us. <laughs> if you hate us. Come whoop our ass. Come hit us on the track. Right. So you have a good night. And it, remember, it's, it's all, all about, about the experience. experience.